In this episode, we're going to talk about something called a switch inside PHP. And the basic idea behind a switch is that we can do something different inside the browser, depending on some kind of answer we might have. So in our example, our answer is going to be x, which is equal to 1. So the way we write out a switch is by writing switch, parentheses, curly brackets. And you guys might recognize it looks very similar to an if statement. It's not exactly the same though, because in an if statement, you do actually have different conditions underneath each other like this, where in a switch, you write all the different possible answers inside the curly brackets itself. So let's actually go ahead and write out one different case that actually says if x, for example, is equal to one, then do this. So the way we do that is by writing out case, space, and then we need to write what answer it should be. And in this case, it's gonna be one. Then we're gonna go ahead and say colon. Let's actually go ahead and move down to the next line. And then we're gonna go ahead and put in the code that needs to go inside the browser if x in fact is equal to one. So let's actually go ahead and say we're gonna echo. And then we're gonna put in a string that says the answer is one. Now after we're done giving out the answer, we need to put in something called a break. And the break essentially says that now we're ending case number one. So we also need to add one more thing because right now we didn't actually tell the switch what we're actually checking for. And in our case, we're actually checking variable X. So we need to put variable X inside the parentheses. So now if we go into the browser and refresh, you guys can see it says the answer is one because in this case, x is actually equal to one. And we did actually check if it was equal to one down here. Now, if I go ahead and copy this case, move it down to the next line here, we can actually change case one into, for example, a string called number as an example. And then we can actually go ahead and say the answer is number. Now the thing we can change here to change the answer is by going up into variable x, changing equal to one into a string called number. So now if x is equal to number, then it's actually gonna go ahead and say the answer is number. So if I refresh the browser, you guys will notice that it changes to the answer is number. So we can add a lot of different cases here. We can actually copy these and just kind of paste them underneath each other. We can change number to two, an actual integer, three, and four. So now we have four different cases where we count depending on if it's one, two, three, or four, it's gonna do something specific. So we can actually change this to two, three, and four. So as you guys can see, we can actually change our variable up here and say if it's four, then it's gonna say the answer is four, of course. Now, this is all good, but let's actually say we have some kind of answer that we don't actually have listed inside our cases. We're gonna go down to the next line and then we're gonna write something called default. Now the default is gonna say, okay, if the answer is something else that we did not state in here, then it's gonna do this down here. So we're gonna go ahead and say echo. I'm just gonna copy the top line here, echo. And then we're gonna say there is no answer. And we don't actually need to put a break underneath the default because the break is just whenever we have a new case after the next one, we need to add a break before the new case. And because we don't have any new cases after the default, we're not gonna put a break. So if I do actually go up and say that X is equal to, let's say eight, which I don't actually have listed down in my break, it's gonna say there is no answer. So that's the basic idea behind a switch. And this is actually a really nice thing to have if you just need to check for answers and not conditions like we do in if else statements and that sort of thing. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. In the next episode, we're actually gonna start talking about doing something specific inside the browser with all the different code we've done so far. So we'll actually learn how to actually do something with our PHP code. Cause up until now, all the lessons we've done so far has all been focused on teaching you guys the fundamentals of PHP that you actually need to know before you can start using it. So I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time.